Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel is rejecting President Trump's use of outdated German crime numbers to justify his controversial zero-tolerance immigration policy in the United States. The president claimed on Twitter yesterday that crime in Germany was up more than 10 percent since migrants were accepted there. The latest figures show that, crime, that the crime rate actually fell last year. The German government says it's at a 25-year low in 2017, actually. The president's false claims are part of a growing list of issues between Mr. Trump and some of America's closest allies. Ian Bremmer, president of the Eurasia Group, is a CBS News senior global, global affairs contributor. He joins us from Tokyo. Ian, good morning. So the president has hey, said uh, the president has said things are not as bad with Angela Merkel as everybody's been saying. Why is this important that they have a good relationship? And what do you think the real nature of the relationship is? Um, the relationship is about as dysfunctional as we've seen uh, between America and its major allies uh, since the transatlantic relationship really started after World War II. Uh, I've spoken with uh, most uh, of the delegations now that attended the G7 summit. Um, and they've all responded that the relationship was very far from the 10 described uh, by President Trump. Uh, they think it's deeply broken. Um, they feel that their personal relationship with Trump is deeply problematic. Uh, and also that it's increasingly hard to find independent voices around him that they can engage with that will get a message through because they don't want to deliver messages that tr Trump's advisors don't want to deliver tr uh, messages that Trump personally doesn't want to hear. There is that picture that has now become famous at the G7 summit. Uh, the Atlantic wrote that it's become kind of a, a Laurel and Yanny moment with people having two different views of it. What have you learned about what actually happened in that moment? Uh, well, I think the background is important. Uh, it was at this point, it was towards the end of the summit, uh, the Chancellor Merkel of Germany uh, and Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada uh, got together with some of the allies and really wanted to press Trump directly to sign the communique, the one that talked about a commitment to a rules-based international order. Uh, the uh, advisors had been working on it until 3 o'clock that morning, straight through the night, uh, including uh, Kudlow uh, from the United States. And Trump was sitting there with his arms crossed, clearly not liking the fact that he felt like they were ganging up on him. Uh, he uh, eventually agreed. He said, OK, he'll sign it. And at that point, he stood up, uh, he put his hand in his pocket, his suit jacket pocket, and he took two Starburst candies out, threw them on the table, and said to Merkel, uh, here, Angela, don't say I never give you anything. Um, and uh, I would say that uh, that, that, was a, that really showed, if you, if you want to look into what was behind both the, the, the body language there and also why it was that after the meeting, Trump was so agitated uh, and decided to tweet off against uh, the, the Canadian prime minister and decide to pull his name out of the, uh, the communique, uh, completely unknown um, to Kudlow and others that had been advising him. Uh, I think that's, that's really the reason. That's his emotional state at that point. So President Trump had a starburst outburst? Um, look, I mean, his personal relationship with Merkel is deeply broken. Uh, the leaders obviously do not respect each other. Uh, they don't think that the other respects them, and it's pretty clear that they don't. Um, and Trump's interest in multilateral institutions, uh, that, uh, for him, it feels like a constraint, not an opportunity. But looking at it from his point of view, could he possibly have been teasing and meant for that to be a friendly gesture? Is there any way that you could read that? In, is there any way you could read that into it? Um, you know, it's hard to uh, keeping in mind that Trump uh, didn't want to go to the G7. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, convinced by his advisors the day before that he needed to. And one thing we know about Trump is when he's told to do things that he doesn't want to do, he doesn't respond to them easily. He showed up late. He left early. Um, he took his uh, translation piece out of his ear when the French president was actually giving a speech. Uh, he showed an extraordinary lack of interest uh, in working with the allies all the way through. And again, the private conversations I've had with many of these leaders uh, over the course of the G7 summit um, really does express uh, that concern, that level of concern. I've been here in Tokyo. Mm. I've talked with mm. many that have attended that meeting, and uh, they were, they've been extraordinarily disheartened with the nature mm. of the relationship directly between Abe and Trump. All right, Ian Bremer, when you're back here in the States, we'll get a more debrief yes. on what you learned over in Asia. Thank you so much, Ian. We appreciate it.